The following program contains explicit candor. If you suffer from self-deception, Rando may not be right for you. Check with your political advisor. Come back, Maggie. I know I got something to say to you. I used this tune the other day, and this time it's not half as cool. Do you know how hard it is to come up with something new every single day? Margaret Thatcher rocks, okay? Stephen Colbert, you can't do this. Speaking the truth when others hold their tongues. Wrestling for justice with left-wingers and crocodiles. Resisting the temptation to keep the peace at any price. The only talk show host who writes his own theme music, Randall Terry. Hello, friend. Just left Buckingham Palace. The Queen of England is so distraught over Margaret Thatcher's death that she's actually requesting that some people get together and try and raise her from the dead. I, I'm, I'm just joking. But anyway, we are going to look at how someone impacts the world even after their death. As the book of Hebrews says, though dead, she yet speaketh. But first, speak a thing of old women, this really weird one. Why do we have this bit on the show anyway? Can someone tell me? She's cute. <laughs> oh, dear children, when you grow up, you want to grow up in house of Islam, which is peace. You do not want to grow up in the house of war. Listen to Mohammed. Welcome to today's program, friend. If you have missed any of my shows in the recent days, this is the third show on a series regarding the late Margaret Thatcher, former Prime Minister of England. I encourage you to go to our website, voiceofresistance.com, and watch the archived shows if you missed any of them. I promise you, you will find them informative, educational, and you're going to see a lot more of Margaret Thatcher there than you probably have in a lot of the news coverage that has been airing since her death. I want to play this clip uh, about her as a, as a younger mother when her children were small. But before I do, I, I, have to, I have to say that predominantly history shows that it is men who lead nations, it is men who lead battles. Every once in a while, God raises up a Deborah or a Miriam, like Moses' sister. We do see at critical points the Joan of Arcs coming forth to fight for justice, but they stand out primarily because of their rarity. Margaret Thatcher's father had enormous influence on her. He had no sons. So he was pouring himself into his two daughters and Lady Thatcher, as she died, was clearly massively impacted by her dad's role in her life, both in content verbally and in his, his behavior. But she was still a mom. She was married to Dennis, I believe her husband's name was, for 52 years before he died. And they had a true and deep love affair. I would encourage you, if you have not seen the movie, The Iron Lady, in which Meryl Streep plays Margaret Thatcher, I would encourage you to watch it. Um, a juggling act of that nature, of having small children and being in Parliament, as she was, clearly would be difficult, clearly is not the norm. But she was able to pull it off, and because she was a woman, she was able to do things, I think, that maybe some men couldn't have gotten away with, because she was a mom, a wife, a homemaker, always worried about balancing the books for the family. Let's watch this clip and then I'm going to read to you from Meryl Streep herself. Have you been able to combine your political life with looking after a family, running a home? Well, I mainly do the catering here. I like cooking and I do the shopping and always a big batch of cooking at the weekend. And of course, there are the parliamentary recesses, which coincide with the school holidays. So I can see quite a good bit of the children and take them out. And at half term, they come up to the House of Commons and have lunch with me. Well, there you have it. 
50 years ago probably. Well, no, that, that clip is probably 40 years old. But you can see, even in the question from the interviewer, that <clears throat> it was considered a strain, would have been a strain on a mom. So if you've got small children, and whether you're a mom or a dad, you have to weigh it very carefully before you run for office. Our first priority is our marriage and our children. Now, let's read from Meryl Streep. This is actually funny because poor Meryl was, was clearly deeply moved by the life of Margaret Thatcher, but also doesn't know what to do with her politics. So Lane, put that up on the screen and I'll read portions of it. Margaret Thatcher was a pioneer, willingly or unwillingly, for the role of women in politics. All right, so now we know where she's gonna go with this. It's hard to imagine a part of our current history that has not been affected by measures she put forward in the UK at the end of the 20th century. Her hard-nosed fiscal measures took a toll on the poor, and her hands-off approach to financial regulation led to great wealth for others. So now we know that Meryl Streep does not approve of the ending of socialism in England as a result of Margaret Thatcher's policies. There is an argument that her steadfast, almost emotional loyalty to the pound sterling has helped the UK weather the storms of European monetary uncertainty. There is an argument? Are you kidding me, Meryl? If England had surrendered the pound and become a part of the euro, they'd be in the same crisis everyone else is in right now. Margaret Thatcher wouldn't do it. Do I have to take a break? Yeah. All right, let me take a break. When we come back, I'll finish up with Meryl Streep's um, comments. And, and the reason I'm putting her first before I read President Obama's statement is because at least Meryl Streep owns the fact that she was an incredible lady, but she doesn't agree with her policies. President Obama's statement reeks of hypocrisy and has given me an open door to do one of the things that I like best, pummeling our messianic monarch. I'll be right back. If my cloud has a silver lining, it's only to store electricity for the lightning. Do you want to have knowledge, wisdom, discernment? If so, you have to read good books, theology, history, books that look at the lives of great men and women. So to help you to become a more effective Christian, a better witness for truth, somebody who can engage in productive conversation that exhorts and edifies those that you speak with, we're gonna do something crazy. We're offering you these seven books for a gift of any size. You just pay for the shipping and handling and then give whatever gift that you can and we will send them to you. But just to make it a little bit more crazy, I will send you a second copy of my three books autographed you can give them as a gift to your pastor or to a family member and help extend truth and justice in the world. This is While Supplies Last. Success cannot be guaranteed. There are no safe battles. Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome back to the program, friend. My name is Randall Terry, if you just joined me, and we're in the final of a three-part series on the late Margaret Thatcher, former Prime Minister of England. If you missed the shows and you're interested in her life, please go to voiceofresistance.com and look at the archives of the programs that we just finished. Now, I'm gonna keep going with Meryl Streep's comment. She played Margaret Thatcher in the recent movie, The Iron Lady, and I encourage you to watch it. It was actually a very, very interesting and sad movie. Meryl Streep continues, but to me, she was a figure of awe for her personal strength and grit to come up legitimately through the ranks of the British political system, class bound and gender phobic as it was, in the time that she did and the way that she did was a formidable achievement to have won it, not because she inherited position as the daughter of a great man or the widow of an important man, but by dint of her own striving to have withstood the special hatred and ridicule unprecedented in my opinion, leveled in our time at a public figure who was not a mass murderer, and to have, she's thinking of course of Adolf Hitler, and to have managed to keep her convictions attached to fervent ideals and ideas, wrong-headed or misguided as we might see them now, without corruption, I see that as evidence of some kind of greatness, worthy for the argument of history to settle. 
to have given women and girls around the world reason to supplant fantasies of being princesses with a different dream, the real life option of leading their nation. This was groundbreaking and admirable. Well, what about Meryl being a princess who rules the nation? Let's not give up on that. You can have power and the beauty of a princess. All right, I'm, I'm having fun with this. You can see equivocation after equivocation and poor Meryl having to protect herself from fallout. A lot of times people will praise or vilify someone in a way that is done to protect themselves. Meryl Streep had to equivocate, had to say however wrong-headed we might think they are, or let's leave it to a future generation. What really amazes me about her is her strength. And in that, there is great truth. Unfortunately, what Meryl Streep failed to see was that it was due to the patriarchy of Margaret's daddy. Margaret credited her father with almost everything that she was and had when she became the prime minister. And that is a wonderful and endearing tribute to the influence of a dad. So dads, learn from Margaret's testimony. You and I as fathers, as grandfathers, should God give us grandchildren, we have the ability to have an enormous impact on people. And again, touching on the fact that even as I am recording this program, there are protests going on, some violence and looting, arrests happening, protests against her, even after she's dead. Oh, I love that. I, I just love that someone can have that kind of impact when they're gone. Because the truth of the matter is that wicked men like Franklin Delano Roosevelt and President Johnson are ruling this country from their grave. And they are helping, pushing, cajoling, leading us into economic oblivion because of their economic policies. And I close this segment with this. The United States has gone down an economic path that has created a voting block of people who take from the government. Literally tens of millions of Americans get some type of government money every month, and they primarily vote for the Democratic Party. So you have a massive voting block that has an economic interest in keeping the welfare state and the socialist state in business. It's their own pocketbook. She was able to save England from economic oblivion before that block of voters got so big that, she, that they could control who ruled in government and what the purse strings look like. Unfortunately, I think that we have passed that point. The voting block of people who are on the dole, if you will, or taking some type of federal subsidy, federal money, is so large that we probably will not be able to come out of this tailspin without some type of horrific economic collapse. It only remains to be seen how bad it will be and what will happen afterwards. When I come back from this break, the words of our messianic monarch. I'll be right back. It's time to crank it up. It's Randall Terry. Ow! Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today. 
moments with Moses. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Welcome back to the program, friend. It was inevitable that President Obama would have to make a statement regarding Margaret Thatcher's passing. He did not do it on tape. The White House just issued a statement. That says a lot right there. Didn't even have the courtesy to go stand at a lectern at the West Wing and to make a statement for the world to see. Just some printed words on a paper. Ugh, have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Anyway, he, um, he, of course, had hypocrisy, so I'll read a few of the words. I can't even bring myself, it was only two paragraphs long, but I can't bring myself to waste time on my program with his words. The passing of Baroness Margaret Thatcher, with the passing, the world has lost one of the great champions of freedom and liberty, and America has lost a true friend. Wait, 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 wait. President Obama, was she a great champion of freedom and liberty? Is that perhaps why you did not want to have questions from the press corps? President Obama, do you support what she did to the coal miners union? President Obama, do you support that she brought an end to socialism in England? President Obama, what type of freedom are you talking about? The freedom for people in America to control their destiny as well economically? President Obama, what did you mean by her being a champion of freedom and liberty? He couldn't face these questions. He certainly could never face Congress the way she faced the House of Parliament nearly 700 times, answering over 7,000 questions. This is a statement of hypocrisy because what Obama is doing to us is taking away our freedoms and our liberty and forging the chains that will bind us to economic hardship for the rest of our lives. I'll read one or two more lines. Here in America, many of us will never forget her standing shoulder to shoulder with President Reagan, reminding the world that we are not simply carried along by the currents of history. We can shape them with moral conviction, unyielding courage, and iron will. Well, President Obama is certainly shaping our destiny as a nation with his iron will. Well, I don't think his will is iron. I think it's more like aluminum. I think it'd be easy to bend. As long, you know, what's in it for him? He's got an iron will when it comes to deceit and rhetoric. He's good. I got to admit he's good. Even the fact that he could dare to praise her like this. But he is shaping our destiny as a people. He is, folks. And it is a horrid destiny. All right, let's switch gears for a minute and talk about Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. Oh, just seeing these pictures of them together. I, I literally wept. Again today, as we prepped, I wept just watching this video footage. I was a young man in my mid-twenties when this was going on, and I remember so fondly the political alliance between not just our nations, but between two great leaders who were of like mind on so many things. Did you know that Margaret Thatcher actually knew Mikhail Gorbachev before he became the leader of the Soviet Union, and she helped facilitate the bringing together of Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. She also defied public opinion in England and in their allies in Western Europe when she agreed to allow President Reagan to put cruise missiles and Pershing, Pershing II nuclear weapons aimed straight at the Eastern Bloc, the Soviet Bloc. And history now credits not only President Reagan, but to a degree, Margaret Thatcher, with helping bring down the Soviet Union and bring an end to at least that level of the Cold War. She defied public opinion. She did not look for middle ground. She did not look for compromise. She looked for ideological comrades, camaraderie, political soulmates in her own country and around the world who would stand for the principles of liberty and stand without equivocation and without apology against communism abroad and socialism within. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back to sum this up, talk a little bit about terrorism, Argentina, the Falkland War, and whatever else comes into my mind. You don't know what's going on up there. It could be scary.
Friend, you need to get this book. We won't get fooled again. Listen to this. I came to the conclusion that most folks were left over from the Reagan area who were no longer warriors, but are now either too old or unhealthy and had compromised and become comfortable with the Republican establishment. They turned these organizations pretty much into direct mail fundraising fronts and were making tons of money and living the good life in beautiful mansions. The conservative movement had transformed itself from a very dynamic, principled organization in the Reagan years to a bunch of compromising, useless, and ineffective money-making machines. I'm reading to you from the new blockbuster book, We Won't Get Fooled Again, that names names, shows organizations, shows how they say that they're Christian, but they betray Christ, they betray biblical principles in the public square, and we are funding them. Go to the website, call us on the phone, and order it today. I'll send it to you for free if you want. God bless you. How would you like to be able to reach hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of potential customers with your product or your company or your web-based business? Well, you can do that right here on this show. Every single day, we get phone calls or letters or orders online from states all over the country where people are watching this television show. Right now, we are seen in 45 cities at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time every night and then a rerun again at 12.30 midnight. You can reach them using this show at advertising rates that are so inexpensive it would blow your mind. So, if you're interested, contact us at the phone number that you see on the screen or the email address and we can talk about how you can grow your business and help support this show. Welcome back, friend. Margaret Thatcher did have to deal with violence at home and abroad. Let's watch this quick clip and then talk a little bit about some of her struggles. But she and her cabinet were nearly obliterated when the IRA bombed the Grand Hotel in Brighton during the Conservatives' conference. All attempts to destroy democracy by terrorism will fail. We can see, in case you did not know, the IRA almost succeeded in assassinating her, the Irish Republican Army. Uh, that organization, which has now pretty much become peaceful, but at the time they were considered by many governments to be a terrorist organization, bent on securing the freedom of the seven counties that still re, uh, are under British rule in Northern Ireland. Also, Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands, which was home to about, well, less than 3,000 souls, way more sheep on the island. But when they seized the island, Margaret Thatcher sent two aircraft carriers and an entire flotilla and said to the leaders of Argentina, you will leave or we will take you out. There was no compromise. There was no offer to have a third party mediate. President Reagan called her and asked American to please leaders, not attack yet. She ignored. Was being and she said to the world, Eng England is done retreating. She showed leadership. She said with her actions and her words, we will not sit by idly while that which is ours is taken from us by force. That fearless spirit, whether fighting the IRA, whether fighting to retrieve the Falklands, whether fighting side by side with America or standing side by side with America against the Soviet Union, or taking on the miners union in England and dismantling most of socialism in England. She showed that courageous spirit. We are desperate in our times for men and women of courage. Let us study her life. Let us study the lives of other people who are courageous and also learn from the vitriolic hatred that they endured in life and in death and comfort ourselves and strengthen ourselves in this. When we fight for what is true, those who cling to that which is false will hate us, they will revile us, they may even try and kill us, but history and the annals of heaven itself will record that we were right 
and we stood on the side of that which was right. God bless the memory of Margaret Thatcher.